Greetings, everyone. Okay. We now have the most unusual Easter that I have ever experienced behind us. And so the question is this. Now what? What do we do now on the other side of Easter? Well, this week in our daily devotionals, each of the ministers are going to spend some time trying to explore different ways to answer that question. One of the most difficult things, I think, about our current situation is being isolated from each other. And it creates the problem of human loneliness. And that's a big deal. It's not any small thing and shouldn't be taken lightly. That's why I I encourage everyone to make phone calls, stay in touch, do everything you can to keep in contact with people. Do FaceTime, do your virtual connecting, because we need to stay connected for sure. One great blessing on the other side of the resurrection is that followers of Jesus have now received a great promise from Jesus that he made before he left. And that is that we would never be alone. That he would send a helper, the Holy Spirit, who would live in us and with us to help us. He talks about that in John 14, verse 15 and 16 through 18. If you love me, keep my commands, Jesus said. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. It's a really powerful promise from Jesus, and the reality is that on the other side of the reaction, uh, the resurrection, we are now experiencing what that means. It's interesting the way Jesus describes the Holy Spirit in these passages in John 14, 15, and 16. He uses words like advocate, somebody who's on your side helper, counselor, teacher. You see, these are words that describe closeness, being with us, for us, uh, through thick and thin. And this is all because Jesus truly loves us, and his promise was he will never leave us alone because the Spirit, our helper, will be with us every step of the way. So I think on the other side of the resurrection, on the other side of celebrating Easter, one of the things we remember is that the Holy Spirit is with us every day, always. Dieter Zander wrote a little book a few years ago entitled A Stroke of Grace. Dieter was a worship leader, kind of well-known. He had some remarkable gifts. He was a great musician, a great singer, had this incredible voice. But even more than that, he had this ability to draw people into worship. And people uh, experienced worship with him leading that was powerful and drew them close to God. It was was amazing. He led worship in a huge church in Chicago for years, and, and really countless thousands of people were inspired to be great worshipers of Jesus because of his gifts. One day, when Dieter was only in his late 40s, he suffered a massive stroke and it was in the left hemisphere of his brain. The result was 
He did not wake up for six days. And when he did, he could no longer communicate. He had to learn how to talk again. He had to learn how to, his wife's name and how to say it. He had to learn his son's names and how to say their names. He could not use one of his hands. So here we have this great worship leader who had been in front of thousands of people, having the impact that he did, and now his whole life is changed. He can no longer sing or lead worship. Whatever music or worship he had was trapped in a brain that did not work the way it once did. But the amazing thing is that Dieter Zander never became bitter and he never lost his faith. In fact, he says that he believes that he has drawn closer to God than ever before and understands the role of the Holy Spirit in a way he never did. He fought hard to get back whatever he could physically, working hard in therapy for months and even stretched into years. Today, uh, Zeter, uh, he works at a place called Trader Joe's, and Dieter Zander is the guy who's in the back room where they break down the cardboard boxes, and uh, he also sorts uh, produce. When the produce gets bruised or doesn't look quite right, they put it in boxes that they give to those who are in need, those who are hungry. And that's what he does for his job. And he finds meaning in that. In, in fact, he said he enjoys his job. Dieter said about himself, he said, I'm like that bruised fruit that I sort in the back of Trader Joe's market. He said, I don't look so good on the outside. I'm imperfect, broken. But deep down in, I'm still a whole person. And maybe in some ways now I'm more than I ever was, closer to God and in tune with the Spirit of God. His world is small, it's quiet, and he says it's good. There are no longer any performances. Now he's just trusting God day to day, loving his wife, and his sons with all his heart. He now writes on a whiteboard, and he carries this marker with him. Whenever he communicates, he'll write on the whiteboard. And one day, a friend asked him how he was doing. And here's what he wrote. He said, Jesus and his spirit are with me all the time it is well it is well with my soul so this week remember that Jesus is with us all the time his spirit lives in us to help us through even the most difficult times remember we are never alone a, a question I'd want you to explore to think about this, do you see how the Holy Spirit is helping you each day through the challenging times that we're facing? As you do, write down the ways that you see the Spirit at work in your life and thank God for them in your prayers, for the blessing of the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we're never alone. Let's pray. Dear God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for the way that you love us. Please now teach us your ways, your ways of love, so that we can love others the way you show your love and care for us. Help us to sense that we are never alone. In Jesus' name, amen.